October 29th, 2025. Today is the day of three I slash Atlas. A moment when a newly discovered interstellar comet hits solar perihelion at record speed, with every known trajectory model about to be tested. If its path shifts even slightly, the consequences could rewrite everything we thought we knew about cosmic visitors. But what could cause an object from another star to suddenly defy all natural predictions? The answer begins at this velocity hinge. A comet on a hyperbolic trajectory does not linger. After rounding the Sun at just over 1.4 astronomical units, 3II slash Atlas resumes its outbound journey never to return. Its path, calculated from thousands of astrometric measurements, remains consistent with the predictions for a natural interstellar visitor. The closest approach to Earth comes on December 19, 2025, at a distance of about 1.8 astronomical units, roughly 270 million kilometers. At that range, Atlas will appear as a faint, diffuse object, likely between 16th and 18th magnitude, visible only to mid-sized telescopes under dark skies. This is the baseline, a comet that behaves as expected, fading steadily as it recedes from both the Sun and Earth. The coma, once energized by solar heat, gradually dims. Observatories around the world prepare for routine post-perihelion monitoring, focusing on light curve measurements and precise positional tracking. Each new data point is checked against the predicted orbit with milliac second level accuracy, tiny angular differences that can reveal if anything is amiss. For a natural comet, residuals in the tens of milliac seconds are normal, especially after the blackout period when the comet is lost in solar glare. By early December, astronomers anticipate reacquiring Atlas with only modest uncertainty perhaps 20 to 40 milliac seconds in position. The expectation is a slow, predictable fading with no abrupt changes in direction or brightness. This is the standard against which all alternative scenarios are measured. Any deviation from this pattern, a sudden brightening, a positional jump, or an unexpected delay in reacquisition would be cause for re-examination. But in the base case, the story is one of steady retreat governed by the mathematics of hyperbolic escape. A small group of theorists, led by Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb, has challenged the consensus with a scenario that stretches the limits of physics and engineering. Their proposal, at perihelion, 3I slash Atlas could execute a dramatic oberth style maneuver, firing engines or releasing energy to reverse its direction and target Earth. The geometry alone is daunting. Earth sits nearly 0.4 astronomical units sunward from Atlas at perihelion, with the Sun itself blocking any direct path. To swing a multi-kilometer nucleus onto an Earth-bound course would require an impulsive velocity change of about 37 kilometers per second, delivered in a single brief burn. For comparison, that's nearly 10 times the maximum velocity change achieved by any spacecraft in history and orders of magnitude beyond what cometary outgassing can produce. The energy budget is staggering. Even with perfect efficiency, the mass of propellant needed would rival the comet itself, and the heat generated would vaporize surface layers in an instant. Any such event would be unmistakable. A sudden, intense brightening, a sharply focused dust jet, and a radical jump in the comet's trajectory. High cadence photometry would record a spike in brightness while astrometric residuals would leap from tens of milliseconds to arc seconds or more. Radar and telescopic tracking arrays would detect the deviation within days, if not hours. Loeb's group insists that even the most extravagant possibilities deserve to be tested against data. Their challenge to observers is clear. After the blackout, scrutinize every residual, every light curve, for evidence of an impulsive maneuver. If Atlas reappears on track, the hypothesis collapses, but if the comet vanishes or re-emerges far off course, the conversation changes. For now, the scenario remains a thought experiment, extreme but falsifiable, and a reminder that the universe sometimes rewards those who look for the unlikely. A more measured alternative draws attention. A modest perihelion maneuver, not to reverse course toward Earth, but to nudge 3I slash Atlas onto a new outbound path one that bends toward Jupiter. 
In orbital mechanics, even a small acceleration at perihelion on the order of 1.2 km per second could redirect the comet's asymptote, setting up a future encounter with the Jovian system. This is no trivial feat. Such a change far exceeds the capability of natural outgassing, which imparts only centimeters per second over weeks, not kilometers per second in a single event. Yet, compared to the Earth-targeted scenario, the energy requirements are dramatically reduced, shifting the conversation from the realm of the impossible to the barely conceivable. For those tracking the skies, this possibility transforms the act of observation into a kind of detective work. Orbital modelers become keenly alert to subtle clues, a slight drift in the comet's predicted position, a non-gravitational parameter that grows just a bit too quickly, or a persistent deviation in the fit to astrometric data. The signature of a low thrust or impulsive maneuver would be a kink in the orbital solution, small but unmistakable to those accustomed to Miliak's second precision. The practical challenge is relentless. Weeks of precision measurements cross-checked nightly against the best fit trajectory. Any unexplained offset, especially one that grows with time, would trigger a deeper investigation. The stakes are high for the scientific community, as even a minor deviation could hint at engineered intent or a previously unknown natural process. For now, all eyes remain on the numbers, searching for the first sign that 3i slash Atlas is not simply passing through, but steering toward a new destination among the outer planets. Late November brings a decisive moment for everyone following 3i slash Atlas. As the blackout gap ends, telescopes across both hemispheres coordinate a global search, each racing to pinpoint the comet's faint return. The protocol is simple. Reacquire Atlas by Thanksgiving or prepare for anomaly protocols. Even a modest velocity change, just 0.01 km per second at perihelion, would produce a sky plane offset of 10 to 30 arc seconds, far beyond the uncertainty limits of modern surveys. The threshold for detection is clear. Any significant deviation from the predicted track will stand out against the noise. Citizen astronomers, university observatories, and automated survey networks synchronize their schedules, dividing the search grid by longitude and latitude. Data streams in near real time, with rapid cross-checks against predicted ephemerides. If the comet fails to reappear on schedule, or if its position jumps beyond the expected error ellipse, the global community pivots instantly to anomaly investigation. This is the binary gate. Either Atlas is where the models say it should be, or something fundamental has changed. Tracking 3. I slash Atlas is not just the domain of professionals. A suite of accessible tools now puts real-time data and visualization into the hands of anyone with curiosity and an internet connection. The Sky Live offers a dynamic 3D orrery, updating the position of Atlas alongside every major planet, letting users check coordinates, apparent magnitude, and even simulate the sky from their own backyard. Solar system scope and open source platforms like Stellarium allow for immersive sky simulations, where planetary alignments and comet trajectories can be overlaid, rotated, and compared against historical events. For those interested in raw data, the Vera Rubin Observatory's LSST delivers nightly astrometric updates, while Gaia's precise star catalog provides the reference grid for pinpointing faint, moving targets like ATLAS. Data pipelines from these surveys feed directly into public ephemeris services, closing the gap between professional discovery and public participation. With these tools, observers can model the January alignment, predict visibility windows, and even contribute to anomaly detection. Atlas becomes a coordination hub. Its trajectory, brightness, and every subtle deviation open for collaborative scrutiny, transforming a distant interstellar visitor into a shared scientific pursuit. January 2026 draws the attention of both professionals and amateurs to a rare planetary tableau. From the 6th through the 10th, Mars, Venus, Mercury, the Sun, Earth, and Jupiter array themselves along the ecliptic, with 3i slash Atlas threading the same celestial stage. The peak, on January 9th, places Atlas in a geometry that invites both careful measurement and cultural wonder. 
Astronomers track its position against this planetary backdrop, aware that even small deviations, whether in brightness or trajectory, carry out size significance in such a crowded sky. The alignment resonates beyond technical circles. It echoes the fascination with historical moments like the Carrington event of 1859, when planetary geometry and solar activity briefly converged in public imagination. While the configurations are not identical, the visual impact and the sense of collective anticipation are strikingly similar. This window is not just an astronomical curiosity. It is a practical call to action. Observatories worldwide synchronize their observing runs, citizen scientists set their alarms for pre-dawn skies, and data pipelines are tuned to flag anomalies in near real time. The alignment acts as both a scientific opportunity and a cultural bookmark, anchoring a global watch that will persist even after Atlas fades from view. The calendar is set. January 6th to 10th, 2026 is when the sky invites its closest scrutiny. As shown in Minor Planet Center Circulars and JPL Horizons data, the baseline scenario predicts a natural hyperbolic escape, with closest approach to Earth expected around December 19th, 2025, at a distance of about 1.8 astronomical units. Yet, the documentary has outlined two alternative trajectories, one toward Earth requiring a 37 km per second reverse impulse and a more modest 1.2 km per second push toward Jupiter, both testable through post-perihelion tracking. Failure to reacquire Atlas visually by late November, as defined in Global Observer Protocols, would signal an unexpected event. While planetary alignments in early January 2026 offer rare observational opportunities, the true nature of 3i slash Atlas's course remains unresolved. What happens after perihelion will be determined by data, not theory. The next chapter depends on what the world's telescopes see, or fail to see, in the weeks ahead.